So your machine has stopped working or lost power. You suspect your tube. How do we check and confirm the tube is failing or has failed? First, visually check you have a good water flow return to the bucket. You should actually visually check water flow every time you use machine. If you have reduced or no water flow, you have to find the problem and fix it. If you've got good flow like that, you can skip the next step. But if you've got no flow, just little drips or um, no flow at all, we have to fix that problem. So the first thing we have to do, if you had no water flow, that you would actually remove the pipe which comes from the pump and goes up to your machine take that off for a second see if there's good water flow but be be ready to put it straight back on because there'll be a lot of water coming out of there so if you've got good flow on this side that means the pump's working if you've got bad flow on that side you have a problem with the pump and if you've got bad flow on this side we have obstruction or some issue between there and the other end so in the tube area okay if the pump has good good flow the next thing we have to check is the water flow switch this switch is removed, but both of these ends here unscrew. So it also has a direction arrow, so the water is coming in from the right and it's sitting on the left. So what we would normally do, we would undo this, turn off your water, then undo that, check that there are nothing, there's nothing inside there, no foreign bodies, no hair, no um, bits of paper, anything like that inside that tube, because that will block your um, flow and not only does it block the flow this flow sensor would sense that it actually has got flow because it's pushing that little valve which is a non-return valve pushing that valve in and activating the little magnetic switch which is in here so the magnetic switch is being activated it's thinking the machine thinks it's got flow but it could be blocked inside there if you still have no flow I basically would do this which is put a hose tail in the circuit and that eliminates any issues that you might have with the flow switch okay so once you put that in and you come up with good flow you know there's a problem with the flow switch either it's blocked or it's failed so it has to be replaced or you can run that for the time as long as you check your flow because you no longer have a lockout protecting your tube from the lack of flow so we now should have good flow because there's nothing to obstruct the tube. So we've got high pressure going in and reasonable pressure coming out. We should have some loss. Always inspect the tube and make sure you've got no big bubbles on that forming. If you're having bubbles form, a good idea would be to make sure your table is a little bit up at this end so that the bubbles can move from that end down to this end and eject, be ejected back in there so you've got no air bubbles sitting inside the tube itself. The, the bubbles will come out one of these tubes here. So now we have our good water flow. So now we can test the tube. So we are testing the tube. So the first thing I would do is put a bit of test tape or masking tape in front of the first mirror. We will then have to make sure that the, either the lid is down or that you're holding down the lockout switch on the lid itself so that you have a complete circuit. If you've gone and removed your flow switch, you will have to complete the circuit. So you have to close that circuit where the flow switch is because the flow switch is when it's open, it doesn't work. When it's closed or the magnets are closed, it closes that switch. So to try and test fire that now with the, with the um, flow switch out, you need to bypass that switch by joining those two wires. So you have to lock down, close the lid or hold down the button on the lid, set it around about 10% power and just give it a small push. Okay, so we have power coming out of the tube. If you have power coming out of the tube, now you can go ahead and align your mirrors um, your bed etc because you've got power coming out of the tube if you it's still not firing we have no power coming through the tube the last thing we have to check is and now to make sure our lockout circuit is working because even though on the control panel the led light indicates that the, the tube is firing if the lockout circuit isn't complete it locks the tube out and it will not fire so 
you'd either need to go with a multimeter or we can bypass this um, or we can bypass that, that circuit if you don't have a multimeter. We're now looking at our laser power supply. In the centre here, as you can see, there's a little red button. That's a test button, which basically fires a laser tube, unless you've got lockout switches working or not working. If the lockout switches are locking it out, it won't work. If you just fire that button, you should see an LED. Down there, we have a red light over here, which is saying it's firing the LED, which is correct. As I said, if we don't have access to a multimeter, we can bypass the lockout switches. And we do that by bridging between where the lockout switches would be. So we'll turn the machine off. Now, this is our block here. This block here has to come out. Now, what, once we do that, we'll pull that out. Now on this particular machine here, the terminals that we are looking at is the power terminal there, which is number four, that one, back to number three. Your machine may be different, so you just have to make sure that you set it up. I'm just going to go and pull this apart now and run a wire between those two terminals. As you can see, we've now taken the wire from the power side back to the return side. That completes the circuit. I've actually disconnected the one that actually normally would come back into there from the switch or the flow switch, the lead switch or flow switch. So if we push that back in, we push this block back into the circuit, turn on the machine. So basically give the button a quick push. Now we that burnt, so that means that we have power now coming through the tube. If that's the case, and we didn't before, we know that we have to look at the switches on the lid and the switches on the um, power, the flow meter and ascertain which one of those is faulty or has an issue or, or out of adjustment. Um, we'll go on to adjust it soon. If we still have no power now or we bypass the switches, we would be looking at arcing. Now arcing happens when power jumps from that terminal to the body of the machine or somewhere anywhere along that red wire internally here anywhere to the chassis if it's arcing or you can hear sparks or arcing you have to go through and work out where it is arcing and why it is arcing if it was jumping off here to the chassis you would have to go through and re-insulate any places where the arc is getting out of the wire as you can see, it's got a flow direction switch. This has a reed in there, which is a magnet on the on the piston inside. So by moving, undoing those screws, we can move that switch backwards and forwards. With a multimeter, you move the switch backwards and forwards. And on the meter, which is hooking, checking on either end of this wire, you should see the switch opening and closing. If you um, set it up and it's in line, once your flow starts, you should see that same thing. That circuit will open when it's not getting water and it should close when it's getting water. So make sure you adjust that to suit until it opens when you are getting um, no water and closes when you are getting water. So that's your safety. On our lid switch, we just make sure that the circuit has been complete between the two wires when it's closed and the lid is down and it's open, it shouldn't be complete. So if you find that when you close a lid, your circuit is not complete, you may have to adjust this switch as well, which you can move the switch up and down slightly so that the lid will actually activate that switch. Like so, on off. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is put an amp meter on the circuit between the cathode end of the tube and the wire here. So we'll disconnect that. Now, don't touch anything. The cathode end there, which is coming out of there, will be positive because the positive power is coming from that end. We hook that up to that. With the positive going to the cathode end, we hook the negative going to the wire going back to the laser power supply. 
we then set our meter. So we're expecting on a small tube like this, less than 50 milliamps. So the machine, my machine is set on 50 milliamps, earth and 50 milliamps. Set the power at about 80%, we'll give it a test. It's about 18, which is about right. That's at 80% power, but getting 18 milliamps. So we know the power supply is now working and it's coming through the tube. 